I want to welcome everyone to our Thursday meet and greet. So this is something new that we have been doing with um, various programs. And the idea here is that we do open houses and we talk globally about Chapel Haven and the REACH program and the ASAP program, but we don't often spend a lot of time drilling down and talking about each program and the amazing things that all of our programs do. So we've been doing these meet and greets and I'm gonna ask Sunny to advance the screen here. Um, and so tonight we're gonna to talk about supported living, which is our biggest program at Chapel Haven Schleifer Center and really super successful program. Um, if you're interested next Thursday, we're doing the community life program, which is um, a structured day program that is popular with a lot of our families and uh, folks outside Chapel Haven who are looking for day programming. Um, so if you're uh, currently a Chapel Haven parent and you're thinking about next steps for your son or daughter and their schedule, the community life program is a nice option. So you can join us next um, Thursday at 6 p.m. And then in June, we will do a meet and greet about career ability, which is our employment arm and also a super program that um, has done an incredible job of finding employment for our adults, like the best outcomes we've ever seen. Um, so we're excited about that. So let's go to the next slide. So what we're gonna do is in a second, I'm gonna turn this over to Sunny Richards, uh, who is our director of community programs. But um, the way this works is Sunny will present a lot of really good information. And if you have a question, you can put it in the chat and we will keep track of that. Um, and we will be pausing through the hour. This is an hour long presentation um, to see what questions you do have. So I would encourage you to put some questions in the chat and we'll open it up and uh, talk further. Um, we are also recording this so that um, we can share it in the future because not everybody could come tonight. But we did have a very good turnout. I was extremely happy that we had quite a few of our own families that are joining us tonight. And, you know, on the admissions end, we get a lot of questions from families as they're entering REACH and then as they're approaching the REACH graduation point, which some of you are, and I know some of our adults are on this and thinking about next steps. And the question is always, what is life like after graduation? And in fact, Chapel Haven, you know, we're celebrating 50 years now. So we have tremendous experience with helping adults um, move out of reach and into our community and be very successful, happy, productive adults. Um, so there's no one better to present this information than Sunny Richards, who has been with Chapel Haven almost three decades. Forever. Yeah, forever. And, um, is incredible. And I can't even begin to say all the things that Sunny does, let alone the Thanksgiving and Christmas meal that she and her family come to campus and cook. And her son went around dressed as Santa and delivered to our adults during quarantine. And just she and her staff are so caring and so dedicated to our mission. And we're just so lucky to have her. So I'm going to turn this over to Miss Sunny. Oh, thank you, Catherine. Hello, everybody. Um, thank you so much for joining me this evening. Um, <clears throat> I Before I switch the slides, um, I just wanted to share, um, you know, my contact information is here. Many of you may already have it, um, but if you don't, um, it's here for you. But also included is my um, cell phone number. And, you know, as the parent of a college age student myself, I understand how um, important it can be to have that connection to somebody. And I'd imagine that, you know, as we move through the transition and graduation, um, one of your fears may be that, you know, if you call Chapel Haven and you don't get an answer and you have something critical happening, you need to get in touch with somebody. That's my cell phone number. So I put that on the slide before I learned that this was being recorded, but anyway, we'll leave it, we'll leave it there. <laughs> um, Erica Bertolini is our supported living um, admin assistant. You know, we spend um, much of our day in the community in supported living. We're not in the office um, eight hours a day, apart from Erica. So she's a part-timer, but she's in the office pretty much every day from nine to two. Um, and her contact information is there 
as well. So she always picks up the phone. Um, so as Catherine said, you know, my name is Sunny Richards and I am the Director of Community Programs, um, featured here with my pal, Brian. Um, I have been at Chapel Haven for, um, well, it'll be 29 years on um, April Fool's Day, which I'm sure there's a joke in there somewhere, but um, this year it'll be 29 years. Um, I've been the director since 2007. And before that, um, I worked in the REACH program um, as kind of like a, a Sue Peters. Um, and back then, you know, in the early 90s, the REACH program, um, it was just REACH and supported living and the red brick building, you know, the one out front with a big yellow sun, that was it. Um, it was certainly much smaller, but when I came to work um, as a life skills instructor, when the two apartments, four men and four women, when they were ready to transition to the community, I went out into the community with them. So I worked as their support coordinator and then um, gradually um, uh, moved my way to the director of the program. So, so we're much bigger now and that's not always um, possible, but, but that's how I came to arrive here. Um, and I thought, you know, you know, it's, you've probably seen it on our website and in much of our literature, but our mission, I, I would take a bet that it was written for supported living, um, the supported living department. Um, because, you know, as you know, Chapel Haven is committed to providing a lifelong program of individualized support services for our, our adults, empowering them to live independent and self-determined lives. Lifelong for me, you know, it's where we're at in supported living. You know, um, students transition from reach. It's like graduating from college. You move into the community, get a job and, you know, uh, set up a network of support. Um, and then individualized, um, you may, you know, in the REACH program, your student's schedule may look similar to another student's schedule, right, in the classes or their work study programs. But once um, students transition to the community, everybody's schedule is different. They have different jobs, different day programs, a different support coordinator. Each schedule is unique. Um, so I just wanted to share that. <clears throat> we, we have some brains too. <laughs> we are accredited um, as shared in some of our admissions, um, admissions literature. You know, um, it's, we are nationally accredited by CARF. Um, we've had the six or gone through our sixth consecutive year of three year accreditation um, with 98% compliance to those standards. And some of those standards, of course, certainly apply to supported living. So I believe we're going to go through that process again later this year, and we um, begin preparing for that now, actually. Um, we are an approved DDS vendor in Connecticut for day and residential supports. And I think I'll just leave it at that. I'd be happy to talk with um, all of you separately about what that means, um, but we could probably spend an hour just talking about DDS and uh, day and residential budgets, all of that, but um, I can talk with you about that too. And then our support coordinators um, and the supported living staff, um, you know, we have bachelor's degrees, we have two support coordinators who will be earning their master's in social work um, this summer, so um, I'm very proud. So, as I had said earlier, once upon a time, it was only REACH and SLP, um, but this um, picture, you may have seen it before as well. So this is the original site, of course, of Chapel Haven um, on Chapel Street. I guess it has since been torn down, but um, it's, you know, two of the original six, not hockey teams, but two of the original six um, students who lived in the house um, remain in the community today. Um, so you'll see a picture of, of one in the next slide, but um, she'll be 70 um, in November and her companion, who she's been with since she came to Chapel Haven, um, will be 70 next year. So that's exciting. Um, our youngest REACH graduate to transition to the community is 22 years old, and she joined us last year. And we currently serve 104 um, graduates of the REACH program, and they're living um, here in Westville. And they receive, on average, 
2.7 hours a week in supported living uh, services. And that's conducted at home and in the community. And that's kind of, you know, well, I'll move to the next slide, but how I'll show you how we arrive at that number. So there's beautiful Laura, who will be 70 in November. Um, but here I have the um, levels of support outlined for you. And I guess it's, you know, I've included it. It's more of, it's probably um, better suited for billing, really. But level one, if your son or daughter receives level one, it's up to two hours a month in support. So we do have some community members who receive only one hour a month in supported living services. We actually have a whole handful um, who don't receive any support um, at this point. But level one is up to two hours. So it could be a half an hour a week. It could be one hour every other week or one hour a month. Level two is one hour a week, three, two hours a week, four, of course, three hours a week. And then level five is four plus hours. So in the, of the 104 community members, right, um, the most, um, the, the greatest number of hours um, they receive is 10. So, and that's not always consistent what, with what DDS might offer in a budget, but we've, you know, as, you know, through the years, we know that when students transition from REACH, um, they are able to, we're able to support them in, a, in the community for 10 or um, less hours per week. That's always been the standard. So, um, Sunny, we should probably just clarify in case people don't know that when we talk about hours of support, what we're referring to are your support coordinators spending X amount of hours with helping the adults. Correct. Okay. Yep. Yep. <clears throat> and that's executed on a weekly basis. It's two, you know, if it's two hours a week, it's two hours, 52 weeks a year. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and we serve 67 men and 37 women who live in the immediate vicinity. And as I said before, the lowest level of support <clears throat> provided is one hour a month and the highest is 10 hours a week. Okay. <clears throat> so I put together this slide. Um, you know, I know there are many um, parents on this, um, on this call who um, have um, sons and daughters who are transitioning from REACH now to the community. So I just kind of put this together to kind of summarize um, the path, if you will. Um, I'll go into more detail in the, the slides ahead, but for the most part, um, in January and February, the REACH teachers schedule the 18 month meetings and facilitate, facilitate that. It's when I first become acquainted with all of you. Um, and then we immediately go to working kind of behind the scenes on the housing, roommates, and staffing piece. Um, and, you know, it's, although we may not have a formal meeting, we'll be in touch quite a bit, um, comparing notes and, and figuring this all out together. In the spring, I, I'm not a teacher, but I try every spring um, and teach the intro to SLP class. Um, there's a community member handbook that's similar to the transition manual that's shared, um, and we go through everything supported living. We also spend a lot of time in the community, um, you know, visiting apartments, you know, this will be the time that we assign mentors, um, just to see kind of what it's, what it's all about. The perspective our community members and graduates have of the of the community itself is a little bit different. We're heavily involved. We have a number of friends and partners in the community, you know, from hairdressers, the police and fire personnel. Um, they're, um, they're great friends to us. So we stop by and say hello to them. Um, so it's, it's, it's a fun time, fun and exciting time. <clears throat> um, by the time the 21 month meetings are scheduled, the apartment, the staffing and roommate situation, that should all be set, all right? And it's at that meeting that we'll really hammer out the, the objectives that support coordinators are going to perform, right, with, with the, um, the um, graduates in their, in their apartments. 
June, everybody graduates. And if you, if you haven't received the memo yet, <laughs> INERA will send you a note saying that the bedroom sets have to be out by that following Sunday. So it's at that time, if you choose to transition right to the apartment immediately, we'll be in place to provide that support, um, um, you know, according to the schedule. So um, it, for the most part, you know, I found that parents, you know, if there are two roommates that are, you know, moving into an apartment and one is going on vacation after graduation, then parents are kind of inclined to take the other home because, you know, you don't want to start the new experience in the apartment um, alone, if you will. So, so things kind of really amp up in July after the 4th of July holiday. But um, just so you know, once you pack up and you move from REACH, you know, that REACH calendar kind of goes out the window. Um, we are a, you know, uh, 24 seven um, community and supported living, um, you know, occasionally, you know, Chapel Haven will close on Christmas and New Year's Day, but we're still working, you know, we're still on call. Um, it's a little bit different, you know, Thanksgiving vacations, they, you know, you can't assume that that's the time to, you know, um, leave for a holiday and um, go on vacation, you know, there may be an employer we have to kind of work with to, um, ask for vacation time. So I've, I've found over the years that that's kind of, that's one of those things that maybe surprises um, families um, that we kind of follow a different schedule or, or, or no schedule really for school. Um, <clears throat> so services will begin immediately. And then within the first 90 days in the community, that's when we're really looking at um, the transferability of school, uh, skills, excuse me. So when students, they learn all of these great things in the REACH program to help them become independent. And then we wanna make sure that all of those skills they learned transfer to the community. So we have, we'll have a list of all of our objectives, all of the things that we need to do every week when we meet, but then we're also kind of um, looking to see what we may need to add or what, what skills are already in place that we can kind of knock off the list immediately, all right? And just so you know, you know, when we assign um, X number of hours per week in supported living services, you know, you don't have to like sign a contract that says that, you know, you're going to be billed this rate forever. You know, it's, you just call me and we can talk about it. We can change that document at any time. <clears throat> okay. So I didn't add this so that you purposely can't read it. <laughs> it's just, I'm not too tech savvy. But anyway, I wanted to elaborate a little bit on the 18 month meeting. Um, this actually is a report. This is, this says Sonny Richards. So this is actually my 18 month report. Um, but it marks the beginning of the transition, right? In January, um, supported living, me in particular, um, that's the time to become acquainted with the students and familiarize myself with their progress and potential areas of focus. So it's great, like this section typically outlines all the accomplishments and then the teachers might put a focus area here and a strategy here. So I'm particularly mindful of those, especially as we're looking, you know, knowing what life is going to be like in the community, if that's something that we're gonna to wanna to pay attention to. Um, through the transition. So that's kind of how we get our um, work. You know, it's, it's, it's dictated to us through these reports. So this would be the 18 month meeting in REACH. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. But there's still time too. So we don't, you know, that's why we, we don't draft that document right away because, you know, there's, there's still six months, you know, for students to kind of achieve these, these skills. Mm -hmm. um, and it's also the time when transition materials are, are sent to families. So there's a transition handbook, there's um, a worksheet um, that outlines programming costs and living expenses. It's a double whammy. You know, you pay for the programming all a la carte, and then there's all of the costs that are associated with um, having an apartment in the community. So that's nicely outlined for you. Um, and then the objectives too, that not that we, complete that immediately, but um, just so you can familiarize yourself with it. I include that as well. Okay. 
So I took a walk around the neighborhood. I have had many calls from parents um, interested in housing um, early this, this year, um, which has been great. But, um, and, and just so you know, so I've, um, you know, when I graduated college, I lived in this neighborhood. And of course I've been at Chapel Haven for many, many years now. And, and I'll tell you that, you know, many of the, um, our neighbors here that own some of these condos, they will call Chapel Haven when they're ready to sell. We also have families who bought condos, um, you know, 30 years ago, and their son or daughter has since moved from that, that condo to the sale program. Um, so um, I have a list, I maintain a list of families who are seeking condos. I have a roommates list too, but I just thought that I'd share some pictures of some of the properties so that when you're in the neighborhood, you can take a little look at them. So. Um, right next door to Chapel Haven. This is like prime Chapel Haven real estate right here, Quincy Muse. It's, it's on, um, right ne on Whaley Avenue, just next door, right through the parking lot. If you hit the gas in that parking lot, you can hit the back of this building. Um, there are townhouse type um, condos. There are a couple of ranch style condos that are closer to the road, but you can see here, like that's a Chapel Haven van. And many of the support coordinators and the residents here, you know, they'll kind of walk, not necessarily on the sidewalk, but we have these kind of paths that we've carved out um, to kind of to cut through, really. And then next to this complex is Westgate Condos, again, a townhouse style um, unit. Um, just as I was taking this picture, Sam was taking the garbage out. And again, so you can kind of see here, you cut through here, you're in Quincy Muse, you kind of cut slide through here and you're right on campus. Just a little bit further down the street toward the village on the left are the village condominiums, 999 Whaley Avenue. Again, we have a number of um, families who own here. Um, fun fact, our, our families, um, you know, our parents, um, have taken on the role as, you know, condo association presidents, secretaries. Um, so we're, our families are very involved in these, in these complexes as well. So that's great. Over here, we have now where this property is on Fountain Street. This is 149 Fountain Street. So this is the back of the REACH building. So there's a little fence here. Um, again, you know, I think of um, our parent or, um, one of our parents who owns there um, is the president. They had a fence put in, but they had a door so that we could kind of move instead of going all the way around the block, we could just pass through the lawn there. But, um, but I guess it got locked up because they didn't want people crossing. Some of the residents there didn't want people crossing from Whaley through the property to Fountain Street. So, but it's literally just over the fence um, from, from Reach. And more than half of these units are owned by Chapel Haven, probably 60% Chapel Haven parents. And then at the corner of Emerson and Fountain is the Fountain View condo complex. We have a number of Chapel Haven actually owned here. Um, and we have a number of parents who um, own condos here as well. Um, and that was that. Oh, and then I, I also included just two pictures of two apartment um, complexes in the area, um, Westville Village Apartments. These are located on Blake Street, a little bit further from campus. And then there's the Towers or 200 Fountain Street, which I bet every single student graduating from REACH this year knows of the Towers. And I would mm -hmm. say that probably 90% of our community members have lived at one time in the Towers. So. So um, Sunny, a couple of the REACH students are saying they can see some of these properties from their REACH apartment windows. <laughs> so that's how close they are. But let's take a pause and see if there are any questions because I think this area of where will my son or daughter live is one of the biggest ones that we hear in admissions. So does anybody have a question that they want to put in the chat? I'm wondering, and I put it in the chat, I mean, are you guys going to cover kind of the range of what rents usually are for singles, doubles, and what some of these condos would go for on the market today, just for That's points a good of question. Rent. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the, so most of the condo units um, 
are two bedrooms and range probably anywhere from 1,000 to 1,600 square feet. And they have sold or are on the market for anywhere from 95 to 130,000. The, so parents, uh, the, the parents who own the condo, typically one of the cheapest rents is for the roommate of the condo owner. Um, it sounds kind of strange, but you know, parents who purchase these condos are interested in having a consistent roommate um, and don't want to, you know, kind of, um, I don't want to say overcharge, but kind of um, keep the cost for them low in order to keep that roommate there, if that makes sense. Um, but I think you'd be surprised by the, the apartment rentals, the two bedrooms, you know, the, the two bedroom at the towers, I believe is like 1700 a month now. So it is, it is a little expensive. That does include heat and hot water. Um, so that would be 1700 divided by two roommates if there are two, right? Yes, okay. exactly. Mm -hmm. But they do have over at the towers, you know, they have a studio, which is essentially one bedroom, a small kitchen and a bathroom. And that includes all electricity, includes everything. Um, and that is $1,100 a month, but really only one person can live there. And so. Sunny, how many of the community members would you say have roommates? Is it 50% or do you have any idea? Yeah, I would say probably 50%. You know, everybody transitions from reach with a roommate and then things change. You know, I think the progression is from a roommate to, you know, living alone or from a roommate to, you know, a significant other. Um, but it, you know, everybody, mostly everybody transitions from reach. If, 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 a, you know, there's a roommate available, then, then with a roommate, just to kind of feel it out for the first couple of years. So in terms of the typical, typical expenses, there's the rent, there's utilities. Yeah. And so, so for that, parent who asked that question, I clearly haven't send the, sent them the uh, programming costs and living expenses worksheet because that outlines the cost for cable, your MyRide bus pass, you know, $20 a week spending, um, yeah. rent, of course, and the utility. So I have that. That's in a, a worksheet that I can share. Does you know? your team help to manage those expenditures or does the, do a lot of the individuals take care of that themselves? So if the individuals are managing that themselves or from like a checking account that they are on with mom or dad, we will help them to pay those bills. Um, but it's, it's kind of, it's half and half. Some families don't want to be, to have any part of the bills and balancing checkbooks and budgeting. Um, that's definitely a service that we provide. And that's, you know, that's outlined in that, the document too, the SLP objectives, all the finances. Finances is kind of a huge section there. And, and um, you know, um, every, you know, from, you know, managing, you know, food stamp entitlements, um, paychecks, direct deposit, budgeting weekly. Um, it's, it's all really what, you know, the student um, wants to do and what mom and dad are really comfortable with um, in terms of, um, you know, having, allowing access um, for the staff and the student to a checking account or savings account. Okay, good. So you want to continue on, Sonny? All right. So, and then the last part, you know, we, we had talked about the 18 month meeting and then finding the apartment, securing um, a roommate and then staffing. Um, so we have um, 17 support coordinators on staff who serve, as I mentioned before, 104 community members who once again receive anywhere from one hour a month up to 10 hours a week in supported living services. So that's one-to-one -one support in the home and in the community. Um, and I have to tell you that the supported living staff are here to stay. You know, if you ever hear Mike talk about like the longevity of the staff, I always smile because, you know, I've been here forever. Um, but also, you know, Debbie Elliott, one of the support coordinators, she was a special education teacher for, for many, many years and worked part time. I mean, she's celebrating, I think, her 34th year here um, as a support mm -hmm. coordinator. So we have some longevity in the department. 
Many of you may have already acquainted yourself with Sheila Moody. She's our benefits coordinator. She does work out of the supported living office, but I believe that um, some of you as, as part of your tuition, um, you know, have, um, have worked with her um, regarding, you know, federal, state, and local benefits. So um, Sheila is um, a member of our team. And then Tammy Bumps, who's featured here, she is our case manager. She doesn't work for DDS, she works for Chapel Haven, but she is all things DDS. So the IPs, um, all the data collection, she's the liaison with all the DDS case managers. Um, that's uh, Tammy and her office is, you know, they're, they're with us as well. And then here in the middle is Jenna Holt. She's a support coordinator. She's only been with us a year. Um, but she is um, fantastic. And Erica Bertolini, a former support coordinator who now serves as our department's admin assistant. You're sure to get in touch with her if you ever had to call the supported living office in the morning. Um, Sonny, can you define IPs? So IP is in DDS lingo, the individual plan. So it's the whole, it's like the annual report. It, it outlines who's responsible, who's responsible for what goals and objectives. So then, so we've secured a roommate, we've, um, we have housing, um, and we've met the staff. The intro to SLP class, you know, that's, that'll be taught in the spring semester. Um, everybody, I'm sure, will love to see that on their, on their schedule. Um, but this, this is just the cover and it's similar to the transition manual that's sent out to parents. Um, again, you know, we go over a lot of stuff, um, what, what life will be like in the community. And then we actually spend a lot of time in the community together as well. Um, so it's offered as a reach class. Sharice will put it on the schedule. Um, it's taught by yours truly. And um, this handbook, you know, it, Every year at the annual review, we kind of go through an abridged version with folks um, and, and sign off as a release. So everybody knows what the rules are um, when you're living in the community. There aren't a whole bunch, but there are some you know, rather important safety rules that we all have to follow. Um, and mentors, that's the time for those students who are interested in having a mentor. Um, mentors really, I mean, there are so many community members, graduates of the program who are excited to give back and excited to meet new students and spend time, um, especially after the pandemic. So if, and, and they are great for, you know, if, um, if, you know, there's, um, you know, an unusual amount of downtime over the weekend or, you know, kind of a lull around nine or 10 o'clock at night, that's a great spot for a mentor to kind of come in and just have a, you know, check in, have a phone conversation. Um, so that's great. All right, so by the time the 21 month meeting rolls around, once again, the REACH teachers will schedule it, but we'll kind of hammer out all of these objectives. So this is where, so this, you can't even read it, but you know, this is the home section, I believe, and all of the different objectives that support coordinators like, Every support coordinator in the department doesn't necessarily perform every one of these objectives, but we do in, in some regard. So we will talk with families um, about what it is that we're going to do and what it is that mom and dad are going to do, or maybe there's a, a family friend that lives in the area and they're going to pick up, whatever the case may be. But it is the last meeting as a REACH student. Progress is reviewed once again and future goals and objectives are discussed and assigned. So if somebody was really working on, say, um, navigating the bus, right? Learning how to take the 232 from downtown or something, or, or maybe they never did actually, maybe they never got around to learning a new bus system or something. Um, and that was really important to their program, then that would immediately transfer to the supported living department and we would begin work on that goal. Those are those, um, those, those are the types of things that are that we visit at the 21 month mark. And it is a team decision um, that involves assigning responsibility. Um, and then the next meeting that's held after the 21 month is the first, it's typically referred to as a 90 day meeting, but it happens 
the, within the first 90 days in the community. And that's where, once again, we talk about transferability of skills um, and see if this huge plan that we worked out is actually working and changing it if we need to. <clears throat> um, so I just, you know, one of the, as we talk about, and I didn't mention this on the last slide, but part of that um, hammering out the objectives is also creating the schedule. And so I think immediately, you know, as soon as I arrive at the 18 month meeting, I almost panic um, about what the schedule is going to look like because, you know, leaving the structure of the REACH program in the campus can be overwhelming. So it's really important that we have a lot of, as much structure in place as we possibly can. So we tap, you know, from my perspective in supported living, all the services that are offered at Chapel Haven are a la carte. And it's my job to kind of tap into each one, whatever one is, um, um, most um, desirable for the individual or needed and figure something out. That's kind of, kind of what we do. So your son or daughter may be involved with career ability, my little misspelling there. Um, reach, you know, um, the classes, there are, you know, it, it's funny, somebody, somebody had mentioned the rec program and, or maybe I said it, that the rec program, maybe it was earlier today, that the rec program keeps supported living in business. Tina's classes also, you know, um, from drama, um, that's a huge one. When we were all in person, drama classes are huge. Some of the exercise classes are big. Um, and we have a number of community members who continue to take the REACH classes. Um, you know, not, not as many as when there are students in REACH, but a few. The REC program, huge for community members. Community Life Day program, Catherine mentioned that um, Alyssa Peretti is going to be doing her presentation next week. That's actually part of the community programs, our domain as well. Um, um, but the Community Life Day program that's on campus here, a day program, obviously, um, but the focus there is really on group volunteerism in the community. So, you know, and it's nice now things are starting to open up again. And you can sign up for um, a half day or a full day. And, you know, there's, it's, it's kind of nice because if, you know, say on Tuesdays, they're volunteering at the downtown evening soup kitchen and your son or daughter has a time slot available on Tuesday, we can plug that in. So it's just kind of like finding what resources are available and building the best possible schedule. Heather and Stephanie in New Arts, um, the Artisan Workshop, that's a fantastic opportunity. And then of course, wellness. You know, if any of you tuned in to Ryan, you'll know he has a whole host of um, things happening through the wellness program. Mm -hmm. So then, so that's the Chapel Haven piece, but then we have everything that's happening out in the community that we love to build into their schedules as well. So <clears throat> doctors and medical personnel. So we have, you know, our, Support coordinators are not licensed, if you will, or um, we, we, we don't involve ourselves with packing or administering medications. If that's needed, then we have Utopia or Family Care and one other home health organization that will bring in to manage that for us. Um, but as far as doctor's appointments go, if you are interested in having Chapel Haven staff accompany your son or daughter to doctors here in New Haven, we can certainly do that. And we provide that kind of as needed. Um, you know, you don't want to, you know, we're not going to bill you five hours a week and say every three months we're going to take, you know, um, your son or daughter to the dentist or to the doctor. We just do that um, as it's needed. So, um, that's, that's, parents have really um, enjoyed and, and appreciated that. There are some fitness trainers who've been working with um, students and community members for, you know, 20 years um, here on campus. They're private contractors, essentially. Um, OT and PT services um, through Ben Haven. There are a number of um, occupational therapists and physical therapists that work with some of our folks. Religious organizations and clubs, you know, um, Becky is in the neighborhood here. We have a fantastic relationship with them. And um, the, we have a Jewish student organization, um, Rachel Skolnick Dobin of the um, Jewish Family Services here in Westville is very active on campus here. 
Um, and then there's, you know, a number of churches in the area as well. So helping students getting involved, um, to be involved um, where they um, enjoy being. And then various contractors. I don't know if anybody out there needs somebody to come into the home and teach them how to floss their teeth, but if you need it, we can get it. Um, Bossy Flossy is one of the private contractors, you know, piano lessons, computer tutors, whatever. Um, so hoping you put all of this together and we have a very robust schedule. That's the goal. So um, attached here is a schedule and it's not intentionally um, uh, illegible. <laughs> it's just, once again, I'm not, not very good at this stuff, but anyway. It's a, it's, this is the schedule. I think, you know, I can't see my name on it, but my name should be at the top. And um, just to kind of walk you through it. So this, this um, you know, this schedule, you know, I go to Growers, which is a work site um, at Edgerton Park from 7.45 to three, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Um, Monday Night Raw at Ben's house is every Monday night from five to seven. Um, so up here, this is where a nurse would come in to pack um, my medications. And then the SC appointment, they'll be built into the schedule as well. So I'll meet with my support coordinator, maybe pay some bills, go to the grocery store, go to an eye doctor's appointment, whatever it is that we have outlined in our objectives there. Um, I believe this, oh, this is my exercise time with Kim from 1245 to 1.30. And then um, healthy cooking with Nicole Renary, a class that I signed up for through the REACH program. Um, another workout session, UARTS, just on Thursday mornings to, um, you know, working at the Artisan Workshop, Kindness Campaign, another great class, um, and then Special Olympics, building in Special Olympics, part of Group B, right? It's so big, we have to divide into two groups. Friday night dinner, that carries over into the community and stays for 50 years, Friday night dinner with your friends. And then on the weekends, hopefully um, a little bit of recreational activities. And then I also see my support coordinator for an hour just for a check-in on Saturday and Sunday. So that's the thing about supported living. We are not, support coordinators do not work from nine to five Monday through Friday. We are, you know, from midnight on Sunday to midnight on Saturday, depending on, you know, um, the needs, what the schedule is. Um, so as I had mentioned earlier, uh, graduation is on Friday, the 17th and, and bedrooms need to be out of the reach program or out of the reach building, um, by that Sunday. So typically families will come to campus, um, attend the ceremony, move the furniture, um, and then, um, the apartment should be set up. The apartments or condos set up by then, and then take off for vacation or, um, have a nice dinner and then say goodbye and we'll take over. And then um, I had already mentioned the 90 day meeting. So once those students transition to their apartments, we begin the assessment period as well. <clears throat> um, so this is Gordon. Gordon is still on my caseload from when I was a support coordinator. I'm still Gordon's support coordinator. So, mm -hmm. um, so this here is, you know, once, um, you know, we'll meet annually, we meet at the 90 day interval, and this is what the report looks like. So there's information in here about what we found in the assessments, the 11 different assessments that we run, and then just kind of like what life looks like, how things are going with the roommate, are they keeping their apartment clean, doing their laundry, that sort of thing in the home life section. Um, relationships and family, you know, staying in contact with mom and dad, you know, um, hanging out with friends, um, who, you know, some, some individuals will set up a goal around that, you know, that they're looking to set up a potluck dinner group or looking for ways to kind of connect more to people. So um, this is kind of like it's uh, uh, a report that um, reviews progress in all of these areas. So home life, relationships, health and wellness, you know, we outline all the doctor's appointments, when they're due, what happened at the last appointment, that sort of thing. Education, work and day, that's, you know, if we included um, their schedule, that would kind of cover education, work and day. It's when we talk about the, all of the productive things that they're doing during the, the work week, work days. Um, finances, 
if, if mom and dad, if you're managing the finances, then there won't be any data in that section. But if we are, then they're all outlined what the rent is, you know, social security, what that amount is, you know, all the income wages, hopefully. Um, and then all of the expenses, cable, cell phone, you know, weekly spending. Um, and then um, the individual's vision for the future, what their goals are, you know, and what they would like to achieve in the coming months. So typically we have these um, meetings annually. We can have them anytime, but annually we all sit down, um, get together and, and um, invite any other, you know, if, if there's work, then we'd invite career ability or a job coach to join us. Um, the team meetings are rather large, um, the, more, the more departments you have involved in the, the schedule. Um, but it's nice to get together every year. And then we can meet in six months, you know, um, probably um, early on, we'll get together every six months, but then, you know, they kind of subside and we'll just send, send the report and then we can get together if there's any questions or concerns. <clears throat> and that almost concludes it. So just some ancillary um, supports and services that, that we offer. Um, our staff um, in Supported Living were on call 24-7. Um, you would, if you needed to call us or if the community member um, calls in, they'll speak to either myself, um, Tammy Bunce, or Alyssa Peretti. Um, but essentially what you do, that this number, the 606-3117, that's the REACH cell phone. And when you call in there and they identify you as a supported living or a community and SLP, you know, post-residential family, they'll connect you to one of us. And, you know, we've responded to, you know, you name it, we've responded, you know, if it's something, if, if we need to come in, you know, at midnight on a Tuesday, then that's what we do, you know, um, um, you know, for emergencies, um, you know, we've certainly knock on wood. Um, we don't have too many of those, but we are available for them. We have a spare key service. Also, so that's housed within the REACH building um, on the first floor, that main office on the first floor. There are some locked boxes there. Um, I encourage um, families to leave a spare set of apartment or condo keys there. So, you know, you're, you're not paying a fortune when they're locked out and, and you don't, we're not waiting outside for a locksmith to come. Um, I had talked already a little bit about the medical appointment accompaniment. You know, we'll certainly do that. Um, and not, you know, that's, um, that's kind of over and above the regular um, weekly schedule of appointments with the support coordinator. And then, um, you know, I, I, I don't want to brag, but I kind of do because the, the staff in supported living, they're a, a unique bunch. You know, we have, you know, Jenna has a walking group. Um, that meets, you know, every Sunday morning. Um, Rosie connects with any community member who wants to um, have dinner on Wednesday night at six o'clock and talk about their days. Um, you know, we, we, we're involved in, in many ways outside of the, you know, structure of, of Chapel Haven. So um, it's exciting to me. So, um, and I think that concludes it, Catherine. Yeah, so here we go. So hopefully everybody can see this. Um, so you can see that the support coordinator is roughly 70 to $85 an hour. And as Sunny mentioned, it would be based on the team's recommendation of how many hours of support somebody needs and it changes. Um, the recreation fees are here, 65 a month to belong to the recreation program, uh, 65 to 90, depending on how much you sign up for. Benefits is uh, help with benefits, 85 a month. That would be Sheila Moody, right, Sonny? Yes. Yep. And boy, you couldn't find a more knowledgeable person. She really knows the entitlements and all of that, uh, SSI, et cetera. Um, if you want help from career ability, there are fees for that. They're not listed so much here. There's fees here if you want to do full-time community life or if you just want to fill in some days on us, you know, your son or daughter's schedule. Um, and then on the right side, you can see 600 to 800 
for the rent per person, the UI bill, uh, utility costs are here. I, don't, I hope you can all see this. The Comcast cable bill, the phone bill, um, gas company, an estimate of 260 a month for groceries, and then the transportation costs. So it's just a nice snapshot of um, what you might expect for expenses out in the community. So, okay, does anyone have any more questions? Before we... Uh... Is there a description of what types of things are included in the community life program, the CLP? There's a calendar I can share with you. Okay. I don't have it on hand, but I can send it to you. And is so, that typical that people will do a couple hours a week of that among um, as they have jobs and they have other activities as well? Yeah. So it's, yeah. So it's, you know, if they're doing, if it's an activity in CLP that they'd enjoy and they have friends or they know some of the other folks, they kind of like to check out and see who's in CLP that day, then it's, then it's a win-win. But, you know, you can always, we, we would never just put anybody in CLP, even if they had a free block of time, we, um, they can check it out for a week or two and see if it's, you know, see if it's a fit before we schedule it. Yeah, but Alyssa puts out a calendar every month. I have a question. Who, when we rent the apartment, who is signing the lease? Is it the individual or the parents typically? Both. Yeah, the parents are typically the guarantor because the individuals uh, can't qualify financially. Right. Okay. I do want to um, thank everyone. And I especially want to thank Sunny, because I know you put a lot of time and you were running around taking pictures all day. Um, and I'm and thank you to everyone for joining us. And we will uh, be sending you the link from today's presentation and we'll send you the cost of uh, the supported living template that I just showed you. Um, and thank you.